Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Red Path. It's uh, Darren and Jamie here again today. We're talking lists, specifically Jamie's lists. How it's changed, how it's doing. It's got a lot of skulls now, I kind of hate it, but here we are. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna have a little chat about kind of our like competitive sort of predicaments and, and situations at the minute. Uh, I've already done a video on this. Maybe it's already out. Maybe it's coming out. We'll see. And now Jamie's going to run us through like hit the you know the big changes in his list. The big change. And uh, yeah, he's got upcoming RTT same weekend. I'll be uh, playing my own. And uh, yeah, we'll see kind of his ideas going into that. What it's going to mean. So Jamie. Hit us up. What's the list? Why is it different? How's it doing? Okay, so it's actually quite a significant change, but also kind of similar. So obviously, previously I've been toying around with different variations of two or three contemptors. Had a Leviathan in there for a couple of tournaments, um, and every change over probably the last four or five months has been a very small change, like just you know adding a Berserker squad or reducing the number of in a squad, just small things. But yeah, this is this is my first significant change um, for my actual physical army. So, starting at the top, okay, HQs wise, this is this is a change because I've dropped Khan and I'm not sure about it. But um, running Dark, Dark Apostle, this is this is the gamble for me. Uh, running the Dark Apostle with Benediction, um, and Benediction is minus one to hit against ranged weapons, and this is going to be going on a unit which I will reveal shortly, which Daryl's already given away. But hey, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to pretend no one knows. Sorry for the spoiler, dude. <laughs> the uh, second HQ is a Chaos Lord with a jump pack with dual lightning claws with uh, flames of spite. Um, I already like this idea. I know you've mentioned it before. A couple of people talked about it in Discord. Is is we're not we're not going like um ridiculous uh like the emperor's children master of executions sort of kind of crazy here but it still still can kick off um and with the new death of the false emperor rule i like it even more especially into imperium like the just sheer number of attacks that you you can get uh with you know if, if you're against imperium uh fives exploding i, I like it re-rolling wounds is just not bad for 115 points yet yeah. And then I've thrown a brass collar on the apostle. Um, I just every time I run the brass collar, I don't need it, but I'd rather have it and not need it than not have it and need it. Um, so then, troops wise, three squads of ten cultists, just as they come. Uh, well, all with auto guns. T uh, two squads of six berserkers, um, chain axe, chain sword, and then dual lightning claws on the champions. Um, oh, dual lightning claws. Yeah, Interesting. yeah, I. I kind of only want one, but I just don't have the combi melter bits because that's my other. I want combi melters in there, but um, I could go chain swords, and I'm still thinking about it, like uh, lightning claw and chain sword, because the second lightning claw isn't the most efficient pick. I don't think so, but, but I guess it also it's like looks badass. So it looks really cool, and yeah. also like, is it really gonna matter points wise? You know, like. Yeah. You save like what a net of six points in that, I think, or is it well, eight or five something points like that? A claw. So yeah, so over oh, the yeah, two sorry, squads, yeah. I'd save ten points there. Plus, my my list is currently ten points under as well. So, um, but I've got some yeah. ideas. I, I'm still not committed to that. In my elites, I am running two uh, Volkite Contemptors with the missile racks. I just I, I want to get away from them because I know the the, the a nerf is coming. Volkite will become oh, will become fairly costed, so they'll still be good, but um, I don't see them being as useful um, or as competitive. I think decimators may start to creep up again, um, just depending on when a codex drops and we get actual Hellbrew rules. But um, I think decimators, if if you've got the models for them um, and soul burners, make sure they're painted. I've I've just got a feeling that that's gonna be better than. Contemptors once uh, points changes for the Volkite, quite frankly. We need a mortal wound source, and that'll be our next best choice. Um, assuming no, they don't get pointed crazy. Um, fast attacks, two squads of Raptors, bare bones, sword and bolt, bolt pistol. I am probably going to be putting at least a lightning claw on the champions there. Um, I don't want to put guns on there, but lightning claw, even if you're doing an action and you get charged, it, it comes in. And I, I don't feel bad if they don't ever get to use it. Then we've got the squad of 10 Warp Talons. Um, I did previously run eight. 
Um, I changed it to 10, painted the extra two. Then we got new Death to the False Emperor. I was like, you know what, fuck it. Um, I did, I am still considering, but I'm not going to do it for this tournament, uh, dropping it to a squad of eight and painting three more and having an additional squad of five. I like the idea of having a big squad to charge up with your frenzy and a second squad that doesn't frenzy, but it's like your once they kill your talons and they come forward, here's some more talons, you know. <clears throat> I not, like that, not yeah. Not quite cool. as powerful, but five warp talons right now are still horrendous. Like, there's not much that they're, they're not going to take a pound of flesh out of, especially, you know, if you're facing marines or, or, or custodies or someone with elite infantry. Five, five warp talons just love, they love going into death ring. They love going into death guard terminators. They're good for just about anything that's going to come forward and hope to sit in the middle of the table. So I like how I, I like the idea of having two, but they are kind of cost prohibitive. But that's just a that's a future tech thing. Then we've got one termite drill um, for my two squads of six berserkers. I did, I have been running one, um, and as much as I really enjoyed running two drills, I find I'm playing better with one drill um i ran two at the rtt i didn't get a single win at and then i ran one at the gt and i felt it played really good every game even though i didn't didn't win many of my well, i only won one game but i i liked the one drill um for my play style mm -hmm. and then the ps de resistance corn lord of skulls yes Ugh. the lord Ugh. of skulls i know Ugh. But look, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'll have a picture on the screen. I'm, I've swapped out the, the tank tracks for a um, Soul Grinder legs. Um, actually, I wonder... No, it's, it's too hidden right now. But, um, so the model I'm okay with. Uh, I'm going to do some more conversions on the, on the tracks so I can maybe run two at some point. But um, the Lord of Skulls replaced my Leviathan and you know, I've brought some other stuff down as well. Um, everyone who's running the Lord of Skulls, and this is me meta chasing, right? Everyone who's running the Lord of Skulls competitively, whether it's Mark or Jack, or you know, there's several other lists using it. I think Zach um, uh, from Vox Demonicus, I think he's run it a few times. Um, plenty of us in the Discord have used it in TTS and stuff. It's too efficient not to use. Um, it does better as Iron Warriors, no doubt. But it also fills a role, I think, for a World Eaters list. Um, it does it very, very well with Triple Vindicators. Um, I am tempted to, to run Triple Predators with it, but <laughs> I know. I, I'm, I'm oh, never going to give up. Never going to give up. I'm going to Rick Astley this. Never going to give you up. Never going to let you down. Forever. Well, until the Codex comes out and uh, we don't have Killshot anymore. But I, I just love Killshot, man. This is so good. But um, I... Need to let it go, man. No. No. I'm dying on this hill. <coughs> um, the Lord of Skulls fills a role. It sits there turn one and will take a lot of punishment. Um, with the minus one to hit, hopefully it survives. Most armies in my local meta... Are, there's very little ad mech at all, quite frankly. Um, there's very little ranged aggression turn one. And the good thing, <coughs> excuse me, about the Corn Lord of Skulls, its profile measures, I think, like seven and a half inches tall. My local meta uses gamemat.eu um, MDF terrain, which the large and the medium sized ruins are both eight inches tall. And this, like, I've checked the specs and everything. So my Titanic Lord of Skulls can hide turn one. Only one one large has no holes in it, and one medium has no holes in it. So as long as I can find a large L or a medium L that has no holes in it, I can put my Lord of Skulls there. And yeah, they'll be able to swing around and get angles, but they'll have to work. Because... Yes, Titanic or, you know, over a certain amount of wounds doesn't benefit from obscuring, but they do benefit from true line of sight. So 
in theory, I, I can probably keep my Lord of Skulls alive turn one unless they have incredibly fast units. And if my if I go second and my Lord of Skulls is still alive, I am very confident in, in taking the mid table. Because Dara, what do you want to happen if my Lord of Skulls runs into you? What what units do you think are gonna survive all its shooting and all its combat? Three Leviathans. <laughs> Three Leviathans, yeah. Oh dude, we've yeah. gotta do that. Get TTS. That'd be we good, have to yeah. do this. We have yeah, to do that. This. That but would yeah. that would be so sick. <laughs> but um, I do think with the warp, you know, this is this is very much an homage to to Mark's ACO list, right? We've got the warp talent bomb, we've got the Lord of Skulls. Now I'm sticking with the um, the Contemptors. I do like them. The Lord sticks with them early doors, gives them a bit more consistency. Then the Lord is going to be like a turn three threat. To jump up with the with the drill, give the drill some re-rolls and the berserkers re-rolls when they drop out. And then the, the contemptors, if they're still alive, they split off, they hold my backfield. I've got my trades with my cultists. You know, they're just gonna run up, die, maybe tie the traitors, whatever. I've got two squads of rap raptors coming in. If I can get average rolls and position correctly, I'm happy to trade with any army in the game, I think. Um I can do work against Drakari, as, assuming, as I, assuming I can pop the transports, which I should be able to with the Strength 6 Volkai and the, the Lord of Skulls should be able to pop at least one, if not two. Then my cultists have just got very efficient shooting into, into little squishy elves, and they're yep, going to be coming they sure forward. Do. <laughs> um, I don't hate I, I I don't want to be cocky here because... Um, the, the game is very different to what you plan. But I do feel confident in my local meta, which at the moment, this, this tournament coming up next weekend, Sisters Heavy, Drakari Heavy, and Marine Heavy. Um, there, may be, there may be a Knight player, um, but I think the rest of it is going to be Sisters, Drakari, and Marine uh, Marines of some stripe or another, and then me. Um... So I think the changes give me a better toolbox to work with, is my thinking. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely see it. Like, as much as I hate on the Lord of Skulls, you can't, can't argue with those numbers. Yeah. And I definitely think it plays quite nicely into, certainly Dark Elder, probably quite nicely into Sisters. And, I mean, it loves playing into two wind marines because a lot of its guns are too damaged, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I, I like. I think you have a lot of bases covered in that list. It's some of those weird lists that I'm sure, like, if someone isn't familiar with our army, they're gonna look at that and they're gonna be like, either this guy's a genius or this guy has just made a list that he has no idea what he's doing with it. It's yeah, like one of those I'm ones where it's like when one, you look. No, nah, man, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. Like when you, you know, it's like one of those weird ones. Like you get it, you get your matchup on BCP, and you're like, "What the hell is this list? I don't know what's going on." Because yeah. you, it's like the selection of units that you have theoretically shouldn't work together, but obviously with the experience that uh, you know you and all of us have with the world leaders, we know how the components work individually and how yeah. they can gel together to form a nice whole. And I think a lot of people just aren't really aware of that kind of like sort of composition of an army yeah. if that makes sense and it's i think it's going to catch synergy it's not like a exactly yeah. synergy yeah. it's every piece is working a different job and if those jobs happen then the synergy is in the list and not in the 30 different rules we can stack right yeah like you don't have we'll say like four units trying to do the same thing like you have like a good selection of units that are good at different jobs and i think that's a very strong aspect of the list overall uh you have the resilience there given that you have you know the big lord of skulls and drills are always hard to take down and like contemptors are definitely not easy to no. take down either so then it's like mm, it's kind of hard for the opponent to like pick up units from you especially in turn one yeah so yeah it's i think it has a lot of really good tools to be honest man like i I certainly think it's quite a strong list. It's definitely on the higher end of the scale of like world leader lists that can be made. I believe. I hope so. Um, my like the 
the meta the tournament I'm going to is Gem Hammer, and that's um, you know I've had some good results there, had some poor results there. Um, the my boogeyman lists there have always been very fast lists, i.e. flyers. If if they're able to get to me turn one, regardless of any obscuring, right? Um, that's been an issue. So another aspect of my list is, and even this is was planned before the nerf to number of flies you can take. Ten warp talons is ten power level. A squad of cultists is three power level. For two CP, my warp talons and my all my cultists are going in strategic reserve. My raptors are definitely going in deep strike, and my drill and berserkers are going in deep strike. It's under half my army. That leaves the Lord of Skulls, the Contemptors. Um, the characters which, you know, that's just about positioning, making sure they're protected um, on the table. Um, and it, m there must be something else on the table. I can't, I can't remember, but I've got the numbers written down somewhere. Um, so if I am genuinely afraid that if I don't get the first turn, I get, you know, get my assets wiped out, strategic reserve. And just hope that the Lord of Skulls tanks the damage that will inevitably come for it which is yeah, it's like an effectively to. a null deploy for a lot yeah. of your army except yeah. for like the very durable units yeah yeah, yeah I, I see that yeah i mean i i if i'm alpha strike i lose the contemptors against a good player or i take a lot of wounds um on the corn order skulls against a, a less competent player no, no offense to anyone that does that but in, in in that situation you need to take out the contemptors and you need to just kite the lord of skulls unless you've got admic shooting basically um, yep. in in my opinion you know uh, I'll, I'll face that mistake when i make it i guess <laughs> um but yeah I, i've put a lot of thought into the micro details like i talk about like the corn lord of skulls i measured measured it so i knew it was going to be able to get some uh true line of sight hiding in the terrain that i'll be playing in you know i'm I'm adjusting for the meta that I'm going to be playing in. Um, I've worked out what kind of uh, reserve plays I can do against particular armies. I'm trying to do as much of the legwork as possible so when I do show up and I'm facing someone who's still bringing two planes, okay, I've got a plan for that. Or I'm playing someone who's got, you know, uh, there is going to be a Tyranid player and that is going to concern me with the new rules. Like they're going to have strong yeah. out of line of sight shooting and potentially gaunt, a, a gaunt carpet or whatever they're running. Um, I, I need to have plans for that. Um, I'm actually not terrified of hordes now with Death to the False Emperor and the fact that I'm throwing lightning claws on everything that can take a lightning claw. To, to me, that's what it's there for. It's either more damage against tough units or it's just murdering its way through T3 stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I think it's like the lightning claw is like, if it can take it, it's going to take it at this yeah. point, you know. I'm totally with you there. I didn't even think about putting claws on my raptor surgeons, but yeah, I'll have to consider that now. I, I think it's a play, it, it, it's if you've got the points, like, um, I can't remember what unit it was I dropped, but I ended up having, you know, like 60 odd points spare, 65, that's it. Um, and I was thinking about bringing a master of executions or a greater possessed. I don't have a greater possessed, and then I decided against it, um, just because of like my CP pre-allocation. I don't really want to have to spend one on frenzy in the uh, uh, possessed as well yeah. half the time, uh, or for it to be useful half the time. Um, so I end up with the points. So I was like, okay, I can add two berserkers to get two squads of six, which I, I'm not sold on. I want to keep them as fives, but then. Well, I, I don't have the slots for Chaos Spawn or anything like that, so what, what am I spending it on? It's always the problem. Yeah. Like You always want to bring the spawn, but it's just yeah. so annoying their fast attack. Yeah. But like, yeah. It's it's really... It's tough. It's tough when you want to have the like double raptors and warp talents, which you pretty much always do. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. The, the other thing I thought what was actually summoning points, having 50, 60 summoning points and getting... Um, was it Furies or whatever it is? The yeah, two, Furies are... Which, which aren't bad, but then, I was like, then I've got a paint build them and paint them i was like no um <laughs> so yeah it's lightning claws wherever they'll go i might chuck a few melters in there somewhere um i don't know we, we've got i haven't practiced with this list at all i've never played a game with lord of skulls and um most likely the rtt is going to be my first time using it um because that's just how it is um 
I don't know, man. I I'm I tend to always approach or the the last probably half dozen tournaments I've been to I've approached confidently. Um and even, you know, win, lose or draw, um generally okay with that. So I don't know. We'll see. Could do all right. Yeah. I, I would like to go if I have a good game and I get reasonable matchups, I, I I can do two and one pretty easily at a RTT. Um, oftentimes that does involve you know a, a newer player, like. But sometimes it's just what it is as an RTT, is, yeah. though, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I have had a couple two and ones where I played and beat two very strong players with strong lists. So I know I can do it. I hope my list enhances my ability to do it, especially with the. Uh, the way the missions work and everything. I don't know if I'm quite at the 3-0 and yet. Um, I don't know if I'm quite there, but it's possible. Like, it, it happens. Like, people pull these out with, like, a... Like, no one's running knights, right? Very few people are running um, Lords of War. There, there's uh, a Tyranid player in my local who runs the uh, Bio Titan, right? But I believe he's the only person consistently running a huge model or, or a titanic model um like i said there might be a knight player showing up this time but most people aren't equipped to deal with a t8 you know 26 wound you know a model with an involve and potentially minus one to hit so a bit of a skew list but we'll see yeah i see it i see it though we'll see. i mean I'm, I'm definitely with you on people not taking towards source of war i think that's totally true so yeah yeah i'm I'm confident for you if that <laughs> if that helps. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting one. It'll be really curious to see how your first like kind of competitive outing with the Lord of Skulls does because obviously, as we know, they're they're really really popular mm -hmm. in kind of like our sort of our own world leaders meta. Demon so Forge, like Demon Forge, it's, it's broken. So it's ridiculous. broken. Good. Yeah, it's like, stupid. But we yeah, have yeah. to use these things, right? We have to. If, oh, totally. Yeah. If there is a strategy that's it. silly or a combo that's silly. We have to use it just to, mid, to, to, to be in the middle of the pack most times. Yeah, totally fair. Totally fair. Yeah, yeah. so fair. Nice, man. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's about it, man. Yeah, cool. Uh, really interesting. It's going to be super cool to see how you do at the RTT. I'll be following along uh, while I can. I'm sure yeah. we'll both be quite busy playing our own games yeah. that weekend. But yeah, it'll be cool. Everyone wishes luck. It's going to be a big weekend of games. I know we got a couple of other world leader players off of different tournaments and yeah. stuff. So... Good luck to everyone who's heading out to those. It'll be really interesting to see a lot of cool results come in over the weekends. And uh, yeah, until then, everyone, you know, leave your thoughts down below. Let us know how you think Jamie's list is going to do, if you have any things you would change about it or whatever. And uh, until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and kill Mainbird.